Welcome to the video tutorial series on modding simple planes. This is part 4 of the custom parts tutorials. In this video, we will be creating a part with a custom mesh. Rather than create a mesh from scratch, I'm going to use a free asset from the Unity Asset Store. I've done some searching earlier and found one that might work well for this tutorial. So I'm going to go over here and say Omega Weapons. I can see there's a free asset here. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to download it. Now that we have our mesh, let's create our part for Simple Planes. I'm going to go to the Simple Planes menu, Game Objects, Part. This time we're going to say Create New Part. We're going to call it, let's say, Omega Weapon. The designer name, call it Omega Weapon again. We'll put it in the Weapons category. And the mass, let's crank this up to 200. Okay, I think I kind of like this weapon 3. We're going to use that one. So I'm going to drag it underneath our part. Rename our part to Omega Weapon. And going over to our mesh, we're going to zero this out. Okay. The first big trick here is getting this thing resized to a more appropriate size for simple planes. Right now it's very large. In simple planes, each cube is about a half a unit by a half a unit by a half a unit. If I want this gun to be about one cube tall, it looks like it probably needs to be about four cubes long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a primitive, primitive cube object. I'm going to kind of line it up with the gun. I'm going to make it a half a unit tall by two units wide. And I'm going to kind of use it for reference as I'm scaling down this gun. So we get it to the target size we're kind of wanting here. OK, that's pretty close. I'm going to disable this reference cube. We don't need that anymore. The next thing I want to do is set up the colliders for this part. Now given the shape of this part, it looks like I could probably get pretty good coverage with colliders with just a couple box colliders. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, certainly not great, but we're going to call it good enough. i got to be careful because I want this part to be able to attach to blocks at the back here and at the top. And I can't have that collider going beyond the bounds of this part where it's going to be attached to other parts because then it's going to think they're intersecting. And it just won't work then. So we're going we're gonna to go with this. Now one thing to mention about these colliders, because in this particular case I do have two of them, one of them I've got to specify as the main collider. It should be the one that kind of encompasses most of the part. It's going to be used for things like determining if the part is in water or not. So I'm going to go over to my main collider here, and I'm going to go to the Simple Planes menu. I'm going to go to Components, and I'm going to add a Part Collider Configuration component. What I'm going to do here is check that it is in the primer. It is the primary collider. There's some other configuration stuff here that you can add to any game object that's part of a part that has a collider that kind of controls how this collider is handled by the designer. If include an area is selected, it determines whether or not this collider is considered when determining the aerodynamic drag of the part. If include an intersections is selected, this means that the part will be considered intersecting another part if its collider is intersecting with another part's collider. You can uncheck this to ignore any intersections with the collider. And including mirror determines whether or not this collider is going to be important in determining on whether or not it is on the where it lies on the mirror line when you're mirroring your
your aircraft. The next thing we need to do is add attachment points for this part. I'm going to go back to my weapon. Here I see attach points. I can add them. We're going to have a couple. And attach points have a bunch of properties on them. These properties determine well, how do they attach to other attach points. The adaptive block handling determines how this attachment point interacts with the adaptive blocks, the ones that kind of change their meshes to match what they're connected to. Attach types allows you to specify whether or not you want this to only attach to certain types of parts. Uh, you can set up options for allowing auto rotation and ignoring the grid, whether or not you can attach them to the wings, things like that. We're going to stick with the default values here. We do need to move these attachment points in their correct position. So the up arrow here, the, the y-axis, positive y-axis, is the direction we need to face, that is the direction that needs to face the other part when we're attaching to it. So with that, I'm going to move these attachment points around, making sure they don't intersect with the colliders, and set up an attachment point for the top of the part there and the back of the part. Okay, those attachment points look like they should be good enough. We'll give it a shot. Next, we need to talk about colors. As far as colors go, if we go back to our part, here we can see the default, prime, the default material color index values. So when you're coloring parts in simple planes, you have a selection of colors to choose from. These index values correspond to the index of those colors in the list. So we're just going to default this to 0, 1, and 2 for now. That'd be good enough. Now onto the mesh. We can see in this particular case we have two sub meshes, each with their own material. Simple Planes handles materials a bit differently. By default, Simple Planes is going to want to replace these materials with just basic colors. This is great because it lets the user you know, customize their plane's colors. Um, I'd recommend that. However, if you want the textures of your part to remain intact. We can get that configured. What we're going to need to do is go to Simple Planes, Components, and add a Part Mesh Configuration component. We expand this guy. we got some options here. Because we have two submeshes, we have a primary material here and a Trim 1 material. The material type, we can choose if we want the default simple planes behavior, or if we want custom with original colors, meaning the original materials on this sub mesh will remain intact and the user will not be able to color it, or we can go custom with theme colors. What this does is keep the texture intact, but it will set the color value on the material for you based on the color that the user chooses. So you'll get some very colored in textures. With some cases, it might look okay. Other cases, maybe not so much. But the options are there if you want them. The submesh index values. What this does is specify which submesh is considered the primary and which submesh is considered trim one. So I'm not really sure off the top of my head, but we'll say in this case, submesh zero is the primary, and trim one is represented by submesh one. Now there's one other thing I want to do with my part. Come back here. I can see we got an option for a custom icon. Let's see if we can get that working. So it's, the tooltip here says for best results, square texture no longer no larger than 90 by 90. And it should be against a background color 234, 234, 236. Very specific there. So how can we do that? There are a lot of ways to accomplish this. And I'm sure this isn't the best, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here to this main camera here. I'm going to tell it solid color only. I'm going to set the color to that 234 by 234, 234 by 236. So when I play, I get a solid color that I want. Now we need to reorganize or resituate the camera to where it points at the part to get a good screenshot of it.
Okay, this should work. I'm gonna get real scientific here and uh, use the window snipping tool. And just take a screenshot. I'm gonna copy that. And let's open it up in paint.net. Okay, close enough. Let's save this. And we can see it's loaded in Unity. Come back over to our part. We can associate this icon just like that. And that's that. All right. Let's go over to the Mod Builder window. Let's save our part. Let's save the mod. All right. Let's jump into Simple Planes and see if it worked. Okay, not so much. I got a problem with my attachment points. So if I look over here, okay. I resized the part object rather than the actual mesh object when I was trying to get things lined up. That is a problem. Okay, hopefully that fixes that issue. I also noticed when I was creating my icon, I have the color slightly off here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Okay, let's resave the part and give this another shot. Need to resave the mod. And let's jump into Simple Planes. We go over to Weapons. There's our weapon. Drag it out. And it attaches. there we go you can see it's color blue currently we went with the default color scheme for the mesh so if I go over to the paint tool we can repaint this as we like and that's pretty much it thanks for watching